Hi everybody, welcome back to Facebook. We're glad to have you with us this evening. Today I'm joined by Council Member Carlos Flores, who is District 2. Thank you, Carlos, for being here. Sure. And via Thank Zoom, we have... Thank you, Mary. Thank you. We have Councilwoman Kelly Allen Gray, who's District A. Kelly, thanks Hello. for being with us virtually. Good to see you. We're excited today to hear a little bit about Carlos and Kelly, co-chair of the Education and Child Care Advisory Committee. And you know this week that's what we've been doing, is focusing on the committees that we set up that council members are working on, and they're working hard on your behalf. You guys are doing a yeoman's job. They're focusing on what changes do we see, what are the immediate needs of people for child care, and particularly on education too. Is that access to Wi-Fi? Wi Is it additional access to child care? Right online learning, they've got questions with their committee and they're gonna come up with great answers. So thank you all for doing that. But before Absolutely. I get into questioning with them, I always give you an update on the COVID numbers for that day. So we're gonna start there. Today, Tarrant County has five, 990 positive cases, 30 deaths and 157 recovered cases. Fort Worth has reported 14 new positive cases from last night. One more <laughs> fatality. That brings us to 373 positive cases, 17 fatalities, and 64 who will recover. You know, we've seen an increase the last two weeks. Tonight, last night's was a little light, less, but the county is approaching 1,000 cases. That's a significant number, folks. You gotta remain vigilant. You gotta stay at home follow the rules and stay safe. Later this week, we'll share some information with you, hopefully on Friday, about what we're looking at for reopening. What's the data that's gonna help us know when we can safely reopen? And trust me, we're meeting with public health advisors, a team of doctors, and businessmen and women to try to assess that for you. So look forward to that coming up. So as we begin here, I know you want to hear about the challenges that face education and child care. So Carlos, we'll start with you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what your committee is up to and what's going on with that committee? Yes. Well, I'm happy to say that we've been very hard at work. Our committee is comprised of 14 diverse members, including myself and Kelly Allen Gray as co-chairs. We also have uh, with us uh, four educators, five on the uh, healthcare provider side and three at-large civic leaders. And we're all supported by some hard-working 13-member uh, City of Fort Worth staff. Now the purpose of our uh, advisory committee is simply this. We're to advise the City Council and the City Manager on matters pertaining to education, child care, and see how our reaction and response to COVID-19 can be best addressed. I know you guys are tackling these hard questions, and they're not easy questions, and they aren't questions we've ever dealt with before, and that makes it even more important that you and Kelly and our community partners stand up. So Kelly, can you tell us a little bit about the coordination with the different agencies that we're working with during this pandemic? Sure, absolutely. As you know, education and child care are not core functions of city government, but these functions are critical to our economic vitality and well-being, um, particularly during this emergency. So we have several city departments, neighborhood services, park and recreation, and library, who each operate facilities that provide um, child development and learning. These departments have been working with our other community department, departments uh, and agencies represented throughout our community, um, such as Fort Worth ISD, the Center for Transforming Lives, Boys and Girls uh, Club, the YMCA, United Community Centers, and um, Child Care Associates. And then those agencies have been operating with other agencies um, to address many of our community's urgent needs here in the city. I'm truly impressed by the work y'all are doing and the fact that all these committees have come together and are working hard on our behalf. And I know you're getting questions you weren't expecting. I can't hear you. Oh, okay. I've said I'm impressed <laughs> with what y'all are doing and I'm impressed with the people who've come together. And I know you're getting some questions that you weren't expecting. So Carlos, Fort Worth ISD is one of our biggest partners. Yes, and as Kelly said, it's not normally our venue to be in education and childcare. 
but it is critical for our families that we are right now. So what are you working with them on as they enter this learning at home phase? Totally different way of kids learning. Yes, and that uh, brings to mind a very good question here. How do we best approach this? Well, Fort Worth ISD has the largest percentage of ED families of all the school districts, independent school districts within the city of Fort Worth. So in consulting with them, uh, we found out what we need to approach and how we need to approach that. Uh, Fort Worth ISD recently launched its uh, Learning at Home initiative. And with that, it's comprised of early this month, for example, it's a phased deployment of 7,000 Chromebooks and hotspots for secondary school level children. We have to make sure that we provide a means to have the classroom at home so we can have some continuation of learning in that respect. We have to continue bridging the digital divide. And what that mm -hmm. means is this. We have to look at specific areas of concern. At the elementary school level, we have gaps that we need to address. The same thing applies. How do we get usable technology in the hands of family who may not even have a laptop, much less internet access? So we rely on our partner agencies. As Kelly said, the Boys and Girls Club, very key uh, agency that we rely on, and also the AB Christian Learning Center help us in that regard. We can't allow elementary school children to fall behind in their learning. So this is something that our advisory committee takes very seriously, and we continue to work to find workable solutions. And Fort Worth ISD announced yesterday that they are bringing to bear 3,200 additional Chromebooks as well as 5,000 additional hotspots. And Mayor, I think that's really good news because we need that kind of technology it's to help us. It's really good news and that digital divide really does exist and we have to help the school district bridge that. But I, Dr. Scribner told me yesterday too that they are looking at pen and paper or pencil and paper yes. work as he said for kindergartners and first graders who might not be able to do all theirs online. So Kelly, there are a lot of challenges. What's your committee doing to help tackle those? So we're focused on the many challenges um, facing our low income and immigrant families um, where many of the parents lack educational, technical, and language skills necessary to actually do online learning. And we know that these problems tend to disproportionately affect African American and Hispanic families um, at a larger rate. And it was already happening prior to the coronavirus with these educational disparities. Fort Worth ISD, as you said about Dr. Scribner, they also share our concerns and we've been working together to address them. And I think that's critical. And you know, you always want something good to come out of something like this. And maybe a right. new level of learning and building equity here is gonna be one of the things that comes out. So another challenge has been childcare. Yes. I know y'all are working hard on childcare. Can you tell us about your committee's progress on childcare sure. issues? Yes, ma'am. What we have been doing in childcare issues is relying again on those partner agencies which can give us firsthand input on what challenges we face. Uh, for example, getting the word out that there is available help to essential employees remarkably is still a challenge. We have to do better in that regard. We've discussed strategies on how to get those essential uh, workers to know that there, is, that there are subsidies that can help them to find quality childcare that they can rely on while they help our community get through this COVID-19 crisis. And thank you, Carlos. And Kelly, you were a working mother who had a child in child care like so many of us. Talk a little bit about what you see on the child care front. So one of the great things Carlos that's happening children, with so. child care associates um, is that there are so many that they have moved online. They have moved um, to, to an online search tool and it's the website is called uh, find.bestplace and it's the number four kids.com. We know that essential workers not only include hospital employees and first responders, but our critical infrastructure workers, as well as restaurant workers, grocery store employees, everybody that we need who are supplying essential services to us at this time. 
More importantly, and even more exciting is that we have the ability to offer 100% childcare subsidies for our essential workers. And so what does that mean? It means that workers um, who with incomes at or below 150% of the state median income. So in layman's terms, that's $118,000 uh, or less for a family of four qualify for three month, 100% uh, paid childcare assistance. Um, so go online to uh, CC, Tarrant County, let me get it right, Tarrant County, ccms.org. It is literally a two page online application and within 48 hours, a social worker will reach out to you and provide you with that assistance and get you moving so that you can have uh, subsidized childcare. We have 600 of those slots available for our essential workers. That's really a big deal. Childcare is Absolutely. so expensive. Carlos, you have little kids, you know yes, that. So does Kelly, I can remember when my kids were little, and I know my grandchildren, it, my kids nearly go broke playing for childcare. So many people do. So call us real quickly, what other challenges do All you right. see that we're facing? Yes. Well, one in particular is this. What we found, another vulnerable community, is our homeless population. Uh, we've mm -hmm. learned on our committee that uh, our transitional and permanent housing folks that live there have a very large and pronounced gap in how they can connect in for their children's sake to educational opportunities as well as child care opportunities. So right now we've begun to explore how we address that. Fortunately, our homeless liaison is already busy at work trying to gather some useful uh, strategies for us to consider as a committee and we're going to be embarking on that very soon. Another thing that came up, in fact, at our meeting today impacts our summer reading and summer programs. Right now, we're going to be putting that on our agenda of things to do to look at specifically and have our partners on our committee give us feedback on what we can expect because there will be changes to those programs. That's good. Kelly, anything else from you? No, I think Carlos has covered it. I will say, and I, and we said this today to everyone who is sitting on that on on that committee, we have not just talked about education and we haven't just talked about child care. We have worked to make sure that our kids across the city are also being fed so that we are not leaving any child behind that is hungry. We have lots of gaps that we have filled in. And so literally this has been a community-wide, county-wide effort to make sure that our kids are not being left behind. Thank you for that. Thank you for your hard work, Kelly and Carlos. Thank you for yours. You guys need to know you've got great council members working on your behalf. Kelly and Carlos are just two. There are six more who are out there working hard too. And I'm always impressed with what our council members are doing. It truly is a community-wide effort to try to get through this pandemic. Lastly, I wanna invite all of you to join us tomorrow night, that's Thursday night, for a citywide ovation at seven o'clock. Come out in your yard, get out on your balcony, and clap and honk as we celebrate our first responders and our hospital workers. It's a joint effort with my friend, Mayor Johnson from Dallas and the Metroplex. It's called DFW Celebrates Our Heroes. So don't forget, tomorrow night at seven o'clock, I'll be reminding you again tomorrow. Till then, stay home. Y'all stay home, y'all stay safe, and y'all stay in.